I'm Dick Strawbridge. Welcome to the grand final of the 11th series of Scrap Heap Challenge. Out of the 50 teams that started, only three remain. And after our final set of challenges, somebody will get to take home this, the legendary Scrap Heap Challenge Cup of Nuts. The setting for our grand final is the rugged, unforgiving terrain of Clearwell Quarry. It's an historic area of South Rossiter where mining's been going on for over 4,000 years. Clearwell hosted our Scrappy semi-finals where the six best performing teams that beat us in the series built giant radio controlled cars to race against each other. After spins and spills, three teams made it through to today's final. Now they have to modify the machines to compete in a new set of challenges with a spectacular finale. Flying cars, just like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. As if that wasn't enough, they'll be taking on my legendary scrappy home team, Dick's Diamonds. We want the trophy for ourselves and we'll be building our own remote control flying car to battle the challengers. To make our machine, we have just one week, 450 pounds towards costs, and whatever we can find on our diamond scrappy. I'll be aided by my resident engineering egghead, Jim Milner, a man who could teach Newton a thing or two about apples. This is big boys toys, and you don't get much bigger than us. Joining us in our bid for glory is star scrapper, Andy Middleton. He has bucketfuls of budging experience. He's previously built full throttle demolition and street sweeping machines with the Chaos Crew and was twice winner of scrappy races. In this series, he won again, twice beating our Highland Games challengers with an awesome stone slinger. Who better to help us in the final? Hey! Hey, Andy, mate, good to see you. Welcome back. How you doing? <laughs> it's the big one, mate. This is it, is it? Yeah. We need to win this one. You trust me? Listen, mate. A flying car, a car that we can remote control. Big thing is the car, what do we need? Automatic. You reckon? It's gotta be an auto. It keeps yeah. it simpler, doesn't it's, it? But it's quite light. The whole pro you know, we've got 250 kilograms. Yeah, so we don't want to grip big every American thing we've got big. No, no, no light, light's important to us. A light here. auto. And basically we need to take the remote control and turn it into sort of a big movement. Yes. You've got a small amount of moments got to work some heavy duty things, so we're gonna need lots of relays big motors and things like that. Some cunning things as well. We need to give this thing a bit of oomph when it goes off the cliff. Yeah, we, we, first Any things ideas? first, let's get think big. Think clever. Yeah, we'll think. <laughs> That's difficult. <laughs> start thinking. Start thinking when you're looking for a vehicle. We all desperately want to win this, so our three challengers had better watch out. The first contenders are the Wheel Nuts, a bunch of car-crazed Bedfordshire buddies who, although being in their early 20s, have performed well on the way to the final. They beat us in the Super Surfboard Challenge to qualify for the semis, where they adapted a road car for their radio control racer. Clever use of electronics and self-centering steering made their car very controllable, and they qualify for the final as the fastest team. <laughs> oh, he's looking quite happy now. He's looking happy now. As they know a fair bit about radio control, we'll have to watch out for this lot. We've all got cars, we've had robots, we've got helicopters, we've got planes. We know this down to the ground, so Dick's on to a loser here. We're going to win. The wheel nuts seem to think they've got a real advantage because they know all about remote control. This is slightly bigger than they're used to. Back on the heap, we're struggling to find a light automatic car, but I've unearthed what could be a contender. What have you found? <laughs> is it an auto? I've no idea, mate. I was just looking at it because it's, it's quite light, isn't it? What sort of gear is it? What sort of gear have you got? <laughs> it's an automatic. <laughs> it's an auto. So we're going for power then. Yeah, no, but hold on. If we get something light like this going, then we can see about adding extra power to it. Yeah. Because we've got with 250 kilograms. Actually, I've got to tell you, this isn't heavy. With a bit of help from our scrap heap friends, we delve a little deeper. It's only got full service history. <laughs> is there an engine in it? There is an engine in it! Hey, look at this fuel injection, it must be fast. In the absence of anything better, we're going to run with this. But we're going to need to boost the power, especially if we're going to beat our next finalists. The Tree Musketeers are a team of tree fellers and boat repairers from Wakefield. These guys like to build fast and furious. They beat us with a monster motorised chariot in the jousting challenge and stepped up a gear for the semis. Their Nissan 280Z-based car could theoretically top the ton, but they struggled to put the power down in the quarry. Beautiful! <laughs> I awarded them the wild card place in the final, as this bonkers build 
perfectly embodies the spirit of Scrappy. Well, Dickie Strawberry, you and that animal that resides on your top lip, good luck this time. Not. Shame will be upon you. If you thought a little bit harder, you'd realise what you're up against. Be afraid. Back on the heap, Jim's collecting gas bottles. He's a plan to give us a boost when it comes to getting airborne. Explain to me what the plan is. <laughs> Have you ever seen a water rocket? Yes. Get a nice bottle, yep. fill it with water, yep. pump a bit of air in, Probably water gosh. blows out. Yep. Imagine on an industrial scale. We get a bottle like this, fill it with water, dump a fire extinguisher into this, that water is going to leave under at a massive speed and that's going to throw us forwards. That's how it's done. Industrial sized water rocket. Now I understand. <laughs> we'll need every bit of thrust we can muster because our last finalists, the carbon consolidators, have some experience of flight. Amongst other things, they manufacture carbon fibre components for aircraft. They beat us in the Blue Football Challenge where we simply ran out of puff. For the semi, they built smart. Adapting an off-road buggy was perfect for the terrain, and they finished second fastest on the day. <laughs> oh, at the end there, Simon. Their knowledge of aircraft makes them a strong contender for the title. Dick, we're going to leave you in our turbulence. You were blown away last time. Prepare to be flown away. See you at the quarry. Welcome to Scrap Heap's grand final. Out of more than 50 teams that started, only three have got through to face us with their giant remote controlled cars. Now they'll be facing my Scrap Heap super team, Dick's Diamonds, in the final set of challenges. We've just one week and 450 pounds towards costs for our build. And we're all modifying our machines to tackle the final test, flying cars. We've already scavenged a base vehicle for our build, along with some motors and switches we need for our remote control. Jim has a frankly worrying idea about using gas bottles to make our car fly. But that will have to wait. We don't even know if it runs yet. Let's get it going before we start even touching anything else. Yeah, let's make sure it's right, a runner. Because it, if it doesn't work, we're back to the start again. That's negative, that's positive. OK, I'm looking for the clues. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <Where's that? laughs> That sounds fit. That sounds quite fit. Yeah, it sounds quite fit, but fit for a weedy thing. Turn the front At the least right. the auto gearbox is working. <laughs> Move, go backwards. Reverse. Yeah. What's the noise? Seatbelt's not on. Perhaps they're telling you the door's open. Yeah, it must be. <laughs> but there's a long way to go before we're ready to race. There there's no doubt that it's the remote controls and how we apply them that poses the greatest challenge. Just like the other teams and their builds, we've been supplied with a remote controller and the car-based electronics needed to receive the commands. We'll then have to engineer the mechanical connections needed to control the steering, accelerator, brakes, and if we have time, our automatic gears. There's only one rule, the car must weigh at least 250 kilograms. By the way Star Scrapper Andy is ripping into our already light Fiat Panda, we might almost reach that. It's, uh, it's made of butter, <laughs> and this is a hot nine. <laughs> he thinks lightweight is the key to beating the other teams. One or two have got something with pretty fast, meaty engines in there, which uh, is going to go quite well. But at the end of the day, they're all going to weigh quite a lot, and we've got the advantage that this is light, so it might fly better. So, we're off to a good start. I wonder how the first challengers are getting on with modifying their car for flight. Bedfordshire buddies, the wheel nuts, are looking forward to getting airborne. Right, guys, we need to work out how we're going to make this fly as far as possible. So, yeah. as I understand it, we've got a cliff, and we are going off that cliff with our car. We've got a couple of things we're considering. We thought about parachutes, we thought about um, wings, um, we thought about perhaps something sort of inflatable uh, kite type thing. So we're going with the wings, um, put some fabric between the body of the car and the, uh, the chassis of the wing. Uh, ideas for what we can use? Um, I think bin liners and tarpaulins are going to be a tarpaulin, bit too flimsy. Pond liner. Pond tarpaulin liner, looks yeah. nasty as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes, the guys are planning to add black plastic delta wings to their hatchback as their flight aid. We're taking off already, guys. Right, I think, right. I think we should fold it in half and cut it in half. If you think they're having a laugh, you'd be right. We're not sure it's actually going to fly. We'd need really massive wings, but we're hoping we can just help the flight. 
if we can make it land flatter or go a little bit further, it might be that centimetre that wins it for us. Their approach is perhaps not so much Wright Brothers as Chuckle Brothers. Do you reckon it's strong enough? Once it's on a framework, it should be right. Yeah, expect That's fairly really strong. It's a really good finish to this challenge, and it should end up with some spectacular results. Back at our build, it's time to get serious. Jim's broken out the electronics so we can work out how to implement them. This is set up how it should be in the car. Now, what we've got is two of these boards and a little servo. What are they, then? <laughs> they are just the big switches. These are just big switches. I mean, if you think that this is what a normal radio control car has in. Okay? Yeah. It's a little motor, and if I push this stick here, it turns a little bit compared to where I'm turning the stick to. Yeah. That's great for an accelerator, because you want that kind of gradual yeah. kind of feel on it. So, so, so you push it down. Yeah, we're going to, we're sorry, accelerate, we're going to do that, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing subtle. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's, that's, but, that's but the way. That's not enough power to push a whole big um, sort of accelerator in. We can get a bigger one that will easily just power the throttle directly. Good. All that's right, so fine. That, that's the throttle sort of. These yeah. are a bit different. If you look at the steering one here. Yeah. Okay. As I push this over, reach the point, it'll just switch a motor it just on. Turns on. It'll just turn a motor on. Push it the other way, it'll make the motor spin the other way. We have to connect that to something that's going to make our steering wheel turn. Yes. I have an idea about the steering wheel. Yeah, go on, talk to us. These things are known for having a lot of power. And if you try to turn yeah. a steering wheel, it takes a lot of torque. Yeah. And the other problem is, if you hit a bump, suddenly it can fling the steering wheel back the other way. If we have a motor and gearbox attached directly to the steering wheel and it tries to fling it back, it can actually break the gears in it. Yeah. Now this has got an electric motor in it. Yeah. It's got a gearbox to give yeah. you lots of torque. It's also got a clutch on it. So that nice. means if we set the clutch to the right one, if it suddenly gets knocked by a rock on the road, all it will do is spin the clutch. And it okay. also means that when you get to full lock, the clutch will give, so you're not going to burn the motor out. You have to get up early to catch Jim out. Actually, you don't. He's terrible in the mornings. But this is a clever idea. And once we've added a roller and some bearings, it works a treat. Yeah, it's a decent speed of the wheel, isn't it? That's good, so you can't oversteer it. You can't no. sort of burn it. Because then it just slips on the ratchet. Good. However, it's not as clever as some of the competition steering. The wheel nut splashed out an extra electronics to self-centre the steering automatically. It made their car easier to control, and Andy is worried about our simple approach. I think it's going to be handful to steer in a straight line, but we, we can only do what we can do with what we've got. Uh, I blame Dick for not spending money. Did you hear that? Me not spending cash on the final? We're pulling out all the stops, just like the Three Musketeers. They made their marvellous 2.8 litre mad machine out of old cars that were lying around their yard. It was bonkers enough on the ground. What will it be like in the air? It's going to fly like a battleship. We do have uh, some ideas, but uh, the thought of actually getting something of that weight to fly is going to prove uh, rather difficult. I was, thinking, I was thinking some strips of aluminium, just in one inch strips, uh, to give them a, a profile. You think we should have one on the other side? <laughs> there is a variable pitch propeller that will be uh, fitted. Whether these will actually help it horizontally or just drive it at a greater speed down into the earth uh, is yet to be seen. Down, down, down. 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 <laughs> Mainly down. Yeah. You never know. It might uh, clear off and end up in Ireland. We have a fair way to go before we can start dreaming of flight. Jim's rigged up the servo to control the throttle. However, a servo is not powerful enough to work the brakes, but Andy has a cunning plan to solve our problems. But the problem we've got is the servos have only got five kilograms of force. Uh, that's not enough to change gear, it's not enough to put the brakes on or anything. If you take a window regulator out of a, an electric window regulator out of a, out of a car door, the servo can actually operate the switch, that takes no power. But then the switch powers this, which is really, really strong. And that probably gives about 30 kilos of force, which is more than enough power for anything we need to operate gears, brakes, anything. Cracking idea, and we don't need to spend a penny. Before you can say electric window powered braking system, Andy has welded it into the car. Right, so we can definitely put our brakes on. Yep. yep. And take them off. Yeah, we can. <laughs> we've got a steering system to now. Weld on top of that. That's We've got the accelerator. Know. Yeah, the accelerator's done. It's all looking good, but this is taking forever. I want to get into the flight aids. That's where the couple will be won or lost. At the moment, we've still just got a Fiat Panda 
and it's not known for its speed. So we've really got to put some time in making these kind of auxiliary jets on the back and just trying to make it go as fast as we can. That's going to take a couple of days of fiddling around. I hope your grand plans for flight come off, Jim, because the carbon consolidators have drawn on their lightweight engineering knowledge to reach for the skies. We did consider getting a lot of speed and just jump off, but we thought the best way is let's try and make, do a control event and try and make it fly. Yes, you heard them right. The carbons are aiming to convert the car into a giant, fully working model aircraft. This is an eight metre aircraft which used to fly and it will lift our vehicle. A friend of the team has donated this lightweight airframe and unbelievably doesn't care how many pieces it comes back in. The takeoff weight's about 250 kilos, which is what we're looking at for the vehicle we've got. Uh, takeoff speed around 25 miles an hour, which isn't very fast. It's uh, big wings for a very small buggy. Yeah, I really think we've got a really good possibility of getting control flight. They're adding another go-kart engine to power the propeller with throttle control linked to the car's engines. We're going to use the driven wheels to accelerate us up to speed on the, rough, on the rough surface and then as we get up to take off speed, the propeller will take over. Well, I certainly didn't expect anyone to go for full flight. This could be a fantastic showdown. It is the final. It's got to be better than anything gone before it. It's going to fly like a bird. <laughs> Whoever flies the furthest at the quarry in our final test will be crowned Scrap Heap Champions. And the teams have tackled this in very different ways. There's everything from airliner to bin liner. It's high time we decided how we're going to get our panda airborne. Just talk to me about this takeoff thing. Do we think wings on it and actually trying to turn it into an airplane is going to make any difference? I think wings are pointless. If we get the wings in the wrong place, it's either going to flip up and drop. Yeah. It's either going to go off and force itself down. I think it is all down to the fact of getting this thing to go as fast as you can and then leaving it in the lap of the gods. I got some bottles off the scrap yard yesterday. Yeah. We have that full of water. Right. There could be a cork in there. Attached to the end of this, we have another bottle, which is actually a fire extinguisher. Yes. The switch. Full of carbon dioxide. We know that that is at 56 bar. It's a, a lot, huge a lot amount of, gas of pressure. Yeah. If we actually put a big pipe on the top of this, yeah. crack that valve open very quickly, all that pressure flows into here, and this water is going to shoot out of there. If this is a two inch pipe, or a three inch pipe, and we're firing that out at 56 bar, we're going to get nearly two tonnes of thrust. Sounds like a plan to me. But we're going to have to time our water rocket firing to perfection if we're going to catch some big air. I want to see something really take off, but we have to perform because it's all about winning. This is the final. Over in Bedfordshire, the car crazy wheel nuts are ploughing on with their pond liner delta wings. These look fantastically aerodynamic. You can see they're trying to take off just, you know, just stood here. So uh, these are going to be amazing. But we shouldn't laugh. There's more to their flight plan than plastic. Our wings may be quite rubbish, but we have got a secret weapon. What we're going to do, we're going to fit a couple of rockets on the back here. So these are going to be mounted sort of in the back windscreen here, and they're going to give this an almighty shove. So we might plumb it, but we're going to be plummeting at speed. If we can make it go out in style in a big ball of fire, then all the better. I don't think Dick's going to come up with anything that's going to beat this. He's going to have a good go, but he's going to fall at the last hurdle. He'll fall at the last hurdle, but not as far as us. Not so fast, boys. You've not seen Jim's water rocket yet. We're making great progress with our build. The remote controls are all hooked up and we're ready for a test. All right, steering, steering, steering first. Go, go drive to the right. It's not working. I have to put your ignition on? No. No? No. No, no stop. Good. Ah. Not quite the result I'd hoped for. The electronics are totally dead. That's not a good start. Right, hang on, this was working. <laughs> it was working, that old chestnut. Put them two back in. Nope, I think it's impossible to make this any more complicated. <laughs> you need a nine-year-old to work this. And we haven't got one. But Jim's right, it was actually working five minutes ago, but now, nothing. It's just a minor glitch. <laughs> Actually, these things happen. Um, there's a lot of fiddly little wires right, here. We'll We're happy we've done the big part of the engineering. No, we need little wiggly amps to make them move. Jim's on top of it. While we're struggling with our little test, the carbon consolidators are gearing up for a big whopper. 
They've gone to an airfield to see if their car can fly. The aim of today is to try and make it do a series of hops, and if we can make it do that, then uh, we can believe that it might fly if we proceed to the final, so that's what we're trying to achieve. As you can imagine, it's attracting some attention. Brian Hogan, who donated the aircraft, is here to lend support. I think it's great. I think I've been most impressed with the, um, with the way they've put this together. And Ken Kriege of the Light Aircraft Association has wandered over to take a look too. He heads a team that inspects home-built aircraft and is relieved no one will be flying on this one. Well, we're interested because we like to see airplanes fly and uh, what's particularly nice about this one is we're not responsible for it. So we, so we can sit back and enjoy this one. It's not often you get the chance to do it outside of regulation and, and to this level of sort of Meccano mechanics. But uh, a great fun and I'll take my hat off to them. Pre-flight checks completed. Are the wings attached? Do we have a propeller? That kind of thing. The team are ready. This is it. Does it have the lift to fly? Yes, the wheels are off the ground. Definite flight potential. Well, that was interesting. It, uh, it looked on, almost, almost on the verge of flying, actually. Got the front wheels off the floor. That's all we really needed to do to prove that it's roughly balanced. Quarry jumping, here we come. Anyone else who's not using any sort of extra assistance in terms of flying, I think they should be worried. Ha! <laughs> the diamond's worried? I mean, Jim's read the instruction manual now, and our remote is working. Nothing can stop us. Master, slow down. Whoa! Is that turning right? It is as well. Slow down. Yeah, brakes on. That's it then, it should be. If we start this up, this will drive. Personally, if you live in this sort of the area of Gloucestershire, move your car. You think I'm joking? This remote driving lock is tricky. Go around the corner. Good man, straighten it up. Oh, brakes! I've left you alone two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> the game reverse, we're all right. <laughs> OK, so maybe we do need a bit of practice in the paint job, but this beauty is what we're pinning our championship hopes on. I think we've got some issues, and they could be just A, getting around the course and B, flying, but apart from that, it's going really well. Out of more than 50 teams that took part in this series, only three have made it to today's final. Soon they'll be going into battle with their giant remote control cars, all vying for the title of Scrap Heap Champions. But to win, they'll have to beat my Scrap Heap Super Team, <laughs> Dick's Diamonds, and triumph in the spectacular grand finale, Flying Cars. But having shed blood, sweat and engine oil to make the car into a virtual aeroplane, the carbon consolidators are about to be brought down to earth with a bump. Their car, being capable of sustained flight, is nudging on the edges of Civil Aviation Authority guidelines and all the health and safety issues that this entails. Scrap Heap's engineering supreme O'Hadrian has his head on the block where this is concerned and has a tough decision to make. Now, obviously, I mean, if it goes into full flight, we're, we've got a, um, a safety issue there, as in yeah. what's, what's actually going to happen should something go wrong. Like sure. somebody, we got, somebody we got, with a burner we... on a CB cuts your radio signal out. Yeah, yeah. If that happens, it'll just glide to the ground, you know? There, there is a fall rate. It won't just drop out of there, it'll actually glide down. Yeah. And, um... You know, it'll just come down gently. All right then, Rob. Nice to see you. Take care, bye-bye. Bye. The cliff will have a natural uh, updraft, and it's, the, it's, it's that in, interaction when the vehicle leaves the ramp, hits that updraft, it's more than likely if they've got a big sail on the top to just flip the vehicle over, uh, which is actually obviously a worry for us. I feel H's concerns uh, about the general the health and safety of if the aircraft should get into difficulty are very founded. At the end of the day, this is just a fun programme. We don't want it injured or, or, God forbid, killed. So we're on his side on that thing. And if he says it is too risky, then we've got no problem with that. We, you know, at the end of the day, it's just a bit of fun. Reluctantly, H decides that it's too big a risk to let them get fully airborne. And they've now got just hours to change their plans. The day of reckoning has arrived. We've seen over 50 teams competing in 18 separate challenges, covering the length and breadth of the country. Now we're down to the best of the best. Three final tests stand between those that are left and crowning glory. Who will win the Cup of Nuts? It's a glorious day at Clearwell Quarry in Gloucestershire. 
The stage is set for the final challenges. The finalists are here ready to battle me and my team over three rounds. The wheel nuts are still confident that binliner wings and a small rocket engine are all they'll need to fly in the last round. A bit of extra thrust and a bit of lift. And we're going to go for a, you know, the best speed we can on the run up. The Tree Musketeers have fashioned a decent set of wings from an unusual source. My beloved Comavan finally gave up her sides to become wings, so she's going to go out in a blaze of glory, as is this girl. And the carbon consolidators have made heroic last minute modifications, but are still hoping their chopped up wings will give more airtime. We've cut the wing sections off and we've basically got two big aerofoils. So we've got one sitting here and one sitting here. So hopefully that'll give us some lift. Yeah. We knocked it up in about four hours, so uh, oh, well you'll done. have to excuse any and if you don't look great, but... Um, it's going to look spectacular anyway. Yeah, well that's done. Right. Thank we'll you very much. You Cheers. Cheers. We know about the team's driving capabilities from the semi-final, but I want to know how we'll fare against these modified machines. But well, we've seen them perform. You know, what, what are we really worried about now? I think the control that the wheel nuts have got it's, it's going to be a problem because their manoeuvrability is fantastic. Right, when it comes to the carbon consolidators. Carbon consolidators, of course, they did have a full aircraft, but they've had to cut it down. So now they've got an engine on the back of the propeller. They have got some aerofoils to go on the top. So what they're hoping to do is jump off and do a little bit of gliding. Talk to me about you know, what do we reckon to achieve? The wild card. Oh, well, I think they're a bit gutted to be through because they wanted to keep it in one piece. Get over it, but, get over uh, it. If they can get the speed, they have a good chance of being the fastest over the edge. Yeah. So, I mean, Though they, they should be the fastest over the edge. Yeah, Where do we stand? With knee drive, come on, Jim. Come on, yeah, we've got to get through these first rounds. We have. You we need them? to try and get the Can biggest long one. Yeah. Well, no. Liar. <laughs> <laughs> so much for the competition. It's time to show them what we've built to take them on. We've got to get more airborne than this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Dick's Diamond Machine. What do you reckon? <laughs> That was laughter, that's wrong. <laughs> There's nothing but power. Okay, get your vehicles, come on, that's enough. Just know you're in trouble. There are three parts to this final challenge. The first two rounds are timed obstacle driving tests. The total combined time for each team will earn them a grid position for our flying car finale. The fastest get pole position with the longest run up. But we have some driving to do first. Round one is gunning for the gap. The team sprint downhill and through the tyres as fast as they dare and then floor it to the finish. There's a 30 second penalty for knocking over the tyres. It sounds easy, but as our remote control expert Ian Watts knows, it isn't. It's really nice, you've got a curve down to the side, so you've got just a gentle curve. It's reversed, so left is right, right is left. Very precise through the tyres and then... Now, everything you say, I'm just thinking Jim Milner's doing this for us. <laughs> First up are the wheel nuts. Their families are out in force to cheer them on. The three of them work very hard together to get where they are at the moment. He loves anything like this, so I'm not surprised how well he's doing. <laughs> the wheel nuts are in with a good chance, so fingers crossed. They were the fastest in the semis, but will their nerves hold in this tighter course? Wheel nuts, are you ready? Yeah, James said, yeah, he's in the zone, James. Right, five, four, three, two, one! <laughs> This is the hard bit. Actually, he's not making it look too hard. Oh, oh, oh. That's oh that is very fast. Oh, he's coming. Oh, he's coming through. Yeah, come on. Oh, oh look. Oh, and he flashes the lights oh. as well. Oh. Are you watching, Jim? Yeah. And it's a result. Well done, the wheel nuts. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> what do you reckon? A bit like that, but fast. Plays with that. <laughs> the wheel nuts pick up where they left off in the semis, breezing through the tire gap in just 20 seconds. That's not funny, by the way, it's just not funny no, at all. That's what, that's what I'm saying, yes. Next to run are the Tree Musketeers. So far, they've played it safe with their power. I think they're going to win because they are slow and steady wins the race, and they're quite, I think they're perfecting the driving a little bit more now. I think they've done really well. And I think they really, really deserve to win. They have immense speed potential. Will they use it? <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one! <laughs> We're rolling. Yeah, he does it. Well done, Andrew. Well done, mate. The Musketeers are taking it carefully. Being overpowered in two-wheel drive, their car could spin easily on the gravel. It's starting to run away with them down the hill. Oh! <laughs> Keep going well done. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no
The clock's still running. Each way's in to get them back on track. This is a really heavy vehicle to try and pull back off there. Yeah, look at that. Well done, team. Well done, team. They're off again, but the hill is proving tricky to negotiate. Unlike the wheel nuts, their steering doesn't self-centre and they have to drive every inch of the way. All of a sudden, those tyres seem very close together. Look at this. Well done, lads. Well done. Oh, it's a thing of beauty. Uh, oh, spoke too soon. No, spoke too soon. Get up. Oh, unlucky. The tyres are down. That's a 30-second penalty. They'll have to push it now. You're going for the finish line now, Andrew. Great effort, Andrew. Come on, look at that little bit. Yes! Stop the full match, don't hit it. Oh, 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 oh. oh how close did you get? <laughs> The Three Musketeers' crash and tyre toppling means they post a time of 4 minutes and 32 seconds. Thank Good you. round. Slow and steady. <laughs> Next to gun for the gap are the carbon consolidators. Their supporters are quietly optimistic. Yeah, I think they can do it. See what I mean? Their off-road buggy performed well in the semis. How will it handle here? Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> And they're off. Oh, 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 oh. They're off. A little bit fast. No, 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 no. no, no, no. we got the steering. we got the steering coming down. Well done, Simon. Look at that. Oh, it's looking oh, it's looking, oh the gap. We've got to go for this. They are gunning. Oh, they're oh. gunning for the gap. They are e gunning, they're e gunning for the gap. Uh, they're, oh, 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 they were gunning for the gap. Oh. It's a hit for Rue. Well done. <laughs> All the way to the finish, Simon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. cracking time. Amazing. How did they do that? <laughs> the carbons are hot on the heels of the wheel nuts with a time of 27 seconds, but they were lucky not to clip the tyres. Just bounced round in the right time. Just was amazing. Uh, yeah. There's no bouncing involved. It's all steering. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, in round one, it's our turn. Even after our crash and testing, we've decided that Jim is still our best driver. Right, um, any reason not to do it, team? Yep, I'm scared. Jim is actually properly scared. Our fate, and that of our panda-powered wacky racer, rests in his hands. Gunning for the gap with Jim Milner and Dick Diamonds. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Slowly, Jim. Slowly, Jim. Yes. Yeah, well done, Jim. Brakes steady. That's fast, fast. Slow down, slow down, Jim. Brakes on, brakes on, brakes on, Jim. Oh, well, well done, man. Progress is a bit stop-start, but at least we haven't hit anything. Well, that's slow, 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 Keep slow. It slow. Slow till you're off. No, 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 the other way, Jim. It's tricky keeping it straight. I almost wish you spent money on self centering steering. Well, almost. You don't know how good this is for us. We are happy. Nice and steady. That's good, Jim. Straight up. Now we're on the level. Jim decides to make a dash for it. Oh, steady, steady. Oh, steady, steady. Oh. steady, steady. Jim! Right, come on through the finish now. Just managed to get through the miss. Let's have a big cheer for Dick's Diamonds! No, no, the... Not yet, not yet. Yay! Yes! Stop, stop, Jim, stop, stop. Run. He's a good man, our Jim! It was you yeah. putting me up, left, left, right. right, right, right. A good effort, given our lack of practice. And with Jim's small error of judgement, we finish in a time of 1 minute 34 seconds. That's a lot better than I thought it would be, Andy thought it would be, and an awful lot better than Jim thought it would be. We finished. These are the standings after round one. Last at this point are the Three Musketeers with four minutes 32 seconds. In third place, it's us with one minute 34 seconds. Second with 27 seconds are the Carbon Consolidators, but leading with a time of 20 seconds, it's the Wheel Nuts. But all this could change after round two, the devilishly difficult Teeter Toppler. The teams have to drive up and onto the giant ramp, stopping at just the right point to gently overbalance the seesaw. Go too fast and they'll be launched into the air and could wreck their cars. A very narrow ramp that we've got there yeah. and it's got sharp bits of metal on either side. <laughs> get it wrong, you're going to flatten the tyre. Yeah. If you don't go fast enough, you won't be able to get up over, you won't have enough traction. It's so, even more difficult than coming down the ramp. Once again, this round is against the clock. Any team that don't make it to the finish line will receive a five minute penalty. First to tackle the toppler are the wheel nuts. Every second counts towards run-up distance for the deciding final flying round, so they can't hang about. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, go! This is control. 
Watch this, Jim Milner. Oh, 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 oh! That's harder. That's harder. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, oh. Disaster! They've punctured the tire and will seriously struggle for grip. I told you we need four wheel drive, can't it? Oh! Could it be game over for the wheel nuts? There's only one thing left to try, and that's to gun for it. Right, everybody quiet, please. Wheel nuts got a flat tire and they're taking a run up. <laughs> yes! Oh, and they're still driving! Uh, uh, James is off, James is off! James is off, James is off. They haven't fatally damaged the car and are able to limp to the finish. Well done, the wheel nuts! <laughs> Cracking effort, mate, that was hard. It was very hard, it was very yeah. hard. The wheel nuts show how tricky this can be and finish in 1 minute 32 seconds. We're worried. He thinks it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> Just think of the rubber he's laid down for Bigger traction. Bigger engine. Bigger tires. And he told you we needed a four-wheel wheel drive panel. We're lighter. The worst comes the worst, I'll reverse over it. Oh, smarty pants. pants. You can't even drive forward yet. You can't even drive forward yet. Next to take the shot at the teeter-toppler are the Tree Musketeers. They've plenty of power, and this could play to their strength. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. Round two's off. What's the technique then? Oh, 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 excellent, excellent. Oh, 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 oh. Is he in line? Is he in line? He's in line. Go for it, Andrew. They may have the power, but they can't get it down on the loose ground and will need to take a risky run up. Wary of bursting a tire like the wheel nuts, Andy's taking it a little too gently. Get it up there. Go on. Go, there you go. <laughs> With the clock running, they'll have to throw caution to the wind. Andrew, run the ball on the back, mate. Away you go. Run the ball on back through the ball at the end of the finish. Right. Come on, well done. Look at that. Today to the end. Well done. Two down. Two down. The Musketeers survive unscathed, but their cautious approach means they clock a time of four minutes and ten seconds. Andrew's now breathed again. <laughs> Next to play on the seesaw are the carbon consolidators. Their buggy is light, and the off-road tire should give them plenty of grip. Round two for the carbon consolidators. Five, four, three, two, one! Uh, Here they go. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, Wheel oh. Oh, that was really sorry. subtle. Oh, oh no. That's some damage. That's this round over for the carbons. They shattered their suspension, as well as taking a five-minute penalty for not completing the course. They'll now have the big task ahead of them to fix the buggy in time for the final. Do you think it is repairable? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a bit yeah. of welding. Yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it bodged back together. It's the problem with the lightweight chassis, yeah, isn't it? it? You know, there's absolutely uh, no strength. Lightweight yeah. bridge. And like those things, you know, it's not going to move when you hit it, is it? No. Okay, yeah. like, we'll get it towed back in and see what you can do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. While the carbons retire to the pits and race to mend their machine, it's our turn to take on the toppler. I wouldn't want to be in Jim's shoes now. Okay, Dick's diamonds are on the start line. Jim Milner's got the remote control. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Slowly, Jim. Look at that. No, no, no. A little bit to the left, Jim. Go on, get, on, go on. get up there, big boy. Get up there. Get some nail. Right, slowly, slowly back, Jim. Slowly back. Slowly back. Have you got traction, mate? Right? He's got traction. Look He's so, at it, that. It's so light. Look at that. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh. Stopped. Oh. You're still in there. You're nearly in the middle, mate. Oh, he's not in the middle anymore. Here on time, mate. You've done it. Yes! Jim Milner. Right, where are you going? Wait, wait, wait. He's going up this way. He's over this way. Don't hit the board, Jim. Andy, it makes you proud. He made it look easy. He really made it look easy, bless him. He hasn't finished yet. Shall we go to the finish line, Jim? No. Oh, 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 oh. Yes! Jim Milner! Stop, stop, stop! Oh. Oh. 
Are you pleased with that, mate? Are you pleased? I am very pleased with that. It's silly one piece. <laughs> he should be pleased. Jim finishes in the fastest time of 1 minute 16 seconds. That means the length of run-up each team has for the flying car finale is as follows. The three musketeers will start 50 metres from the edge, having clocked up 8 minutes 42 seconds from both rounds. Third, with a 70 metre run-up, the Carbon Consolidators. Their time, 5 minutes 27. We are 90 metres of runway, having taken 2 minutes 52. But the wheel nuts, in 1 minute and 52 seconds, earn pole position with 110 metres. Get your wings on, get your rockets on, do whatever you want. Let's get airborne. This is it. From over 50 teams, just three have bodged and battled their way through 18 qualifying challenges and a grueling semi-final to end up here, facing each other and my diamonds in the grand final. We've grappled on the ground for the best runway position. Now we'll take our beloved remote-controlled racers and launch them off a cliff in a bid for glory. It's all or nothing to win the ultimate prize. The legendary Scrappy <laughs> Challenge Cup of Nuts. The teams are readying their machines for flight. The carbon consolidators have added an extra engine and propeller and after some desperate speed welding have managed to reattach their wheel. It's going to get the steering straightened out and uh, we'll be on for a run. Oh, it's got the wings on, of course. The wheel nuts have changed their damaged wheel. Luckily, they bought a spare and are bolting on their bin liner delta wings and rocket motor. The three musketeers are adding carefully shaped aluminium wings to their scrap heap special. And Jim is attaching our secret weapon, a compressed gas water rocket. He reckons it's good for two tons of thrust. Better be. As the sun sets over the quarry, we're all set for the final battle. The three musketeers are first to take off with a 50 metre run up. Could give me a prediction. Uh, we're going to make it off the end. That's, that's really, a, that's good. But what do you reckon, James? It's about as good as it gets. Well, I just hope we're going to make it off the end because it's all quiet up there at the moment. James is right. It is worryingly quiet. The electrical trouble that hampered the team during their build is back. There's nothing happening there. Every time they go for launch, the engine stalls. This is a cruel twist of fate. Come on, Andy, be positive. True level flight. <laughs> <laughs> True level flight. You heard it here. All they can do is hope that a helping push start will keep the engine running. Five, four, three, two, one, away we go! Oh, no! Sadly, it's scuppered. Nah, sad. Our yeah. adventure's over. Yeah. After all their effort, this is heartbreaking for the Tree Musketeers. Right. All that work and blood for nothing. I know. Well, no, you hold on. You semi finalists, so through to the final. What are we in now? <laughs> to be fair, we're uh, that, that's you. You're uh, at least fourth, and I say at least fourth yeah. because you're quite close to the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's not be too shy. We're talking at least fourth for that. Yeah, Next on the runway are the carbon consolidators with a 70 meter run up. Shorter run up than we were hoping for, uh, but um, we've got plenty of. Uh, Plenty of acceleration from the two engines and hopefully the propeller will give us a bit of extra thrust and get us, um, get us up to a sensible top speed. Will their modified wing arrangement give them the lift they hope for? Carbon consolidators, here we go! Five, four, three, two, one! Uh, there they go, they're off, they're heading down the runway. All right, there's more and more, here they come! Carbon consolidators! A great attempt. Their airfoils did seem to be slowing their fall. If only they'd left the ramp square, they might have glided even further. It was a big concern to them. Getting up on the ramp with the ground being so bouncy, it did uh, push the car over a little bit. Now it's our turn to reach for the skies and the title. Can we better the carbons? I really, really, really want that cup. We're starting from 90 metres. Will our rocket send us skyward? Dick's Diamonds, here we go. Enjoy yourself, lads. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> that blade, that sail, that thing of beauty. It's our, oh, look at the speed of that. Look at the speed of that. Faster, 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 faster. Hit the button. Where's the jump, where's the boy? <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. Disaster. Andy hit the button, but the rocket failed to fire. 
All we did was add 50 kilos of water and a gas bottle to our car. Still, we're now in the lead and have one hand on the trophy. But sadly, between us and the cup, we've got the wheel nuts. If they pass where that purple blob is that used to be a car, they win. Be confident. Um, not sure what to think, really. Um, we've got a lot of weight, so I'm worried it's just going to drop off the cliff. So, it's the final scene of the final act of the final. 110 metres of runway, and then gravity will decide who reigns supreme. Right, here we go. Wheel nuts. Good luck, lads. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> They're off. They're off. You look worried, mate. Yeah. Look, look at the speed of that. He's going. Oh, no, he's got good speed. Oh. 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 Yes! Well done. Well done. Well done, mate. Hey. Don't leave it. Well done. These guys were good from the start, and it showed in the finish. A fantastic flight and a perfect rocket fire. That is amazing. I really didn't expect that. <laughs> the cup's going to the wheel nuts. I hate to say it, but they are worthy victors. Will Nuts, you're the 2009 champions! <laughs> Congratulations, team! Yeah, it hurts! It really does hurt! It does hurt! Well done, well done, well done guys! <laughs> Join us next time for another series of Scrapping Challenge. Dick Steins will win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>